Hello class, my name is Leonard Moore. Today I will be discussing Winslow Homer's painting entitled The Pioneer, which was completed in the year 1900. The piece is a 13.9 by 21 inch watercolor and graphite painting on woven paper. The Pioneer is currently in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. What first drew me to Homer's works were his paintings of nature. I myself am very fond of the outdoors and have always enjoyed being outside. Homer also illustrated various types of fish in his paintings, including a bass and a brook trout. Fishing is something that is very close to my heart, and when I found out there was an American artist that actually took time to paint these fish, I could not pass up the opportunity. In Winslow Homer's online biography, I found the inspiration for his watercolors during the time he completed The Pioneer. Homer found inspiration in a number of summer trips to the North Woods Club near the hamlet of Minerva, New York, in the Adirondack Mountains. It was on these fishing vacations that he experimented freely with the watercolor medium, producing works of the utmost vigor and subtlety, hymns to solitude, nature, and to outdoor life. Homer doesn't shrink from the savagery of blood sports nor the struggle for survival. In terms of quality and invention, Homer's achievements as a watercolorist are unparalleled. He had used his singular vision and a manner of painting to create a body of work that has not been matched. The Pioneer was the last of Homer's watercolor paintings to include a human figure. Homer's watercolors from the year 1900 to 1902 represent the conclusion of his work as a painter in the forest. This also signals the close of Homer's career as a painter of human life in the North Woods. In the book Winslow Homer in the Adirondacks by David Tatum, the author states that since the mid-1890s Homer had become a less prolific artist than earlier, but there had been no decline in his creative powers or in the originality of his vision. Homer's paintings became more economical as well as bolder, flatter, and simpler in pictorial space, which actually draws out a more powerful response. The figure in the painting, or the pioneer, is believed to be the same as the man in Homer's The Trapper. It could be possible that the trapper has now become an axeman, traveling wherever work is available. Homer again adds his unique touch by not letting the audience of the painting see the pioneer's face. This leads people to imagine what the axeman could possibly be thinking. One can see right away that the axeman is old and worn out. He obviously has something on his mind, whether it be of past events or the future. It is up for the audience to decide. I would like to think, though, that he is reminiscing on days past when he was young in the forest undiscovered and wild. We also notice that the axeman is alone in the forest. This means that he is on his own in the wild, just himself and his thoughts. This could be either a good thing or a bad thing. We can see that sunlight floods the bottom right open plane of the painting. This could mean that it is either sunrise or sunset. If it is sunset, the axeman must find his way home before it becomes too dark. It could be that this is the last time the axeman has seen this land. Maybe he's saying goodbye to the woods he loves, just like Homer is nearing the end of his painting career in life. It could also be Homer paying homage to the Adirondacks, where he visited so often. When looking at this watercolor, we get a sense of depth and vastness through the way the painting is shaded and colored. You can sense movement through the indefinite lines, much like a breeze is rolling through the forest. The short bushes, in a way, signify new growth and regeneration. They sharply contrast the plain that looms in front of the axemen. The signs of no recent logging and old stumps are an analogy between the old man and the worn landscape. Both have been through many years of life and hardships. However, as the axeman is staring off into the distance, maybe he's thinking of how he will have died, but the trees will keep growing and come back long after he is gone, showing the determination and persistence of nature and mankind. The title of this painting strikes me more as poetic than accurate. Perhaps Homer wanted to call back to an earlier time in our nation's history, of when the forest was wild, untamed, and unknown. The pioneer shows us the sublime, Destruction and creation looking at each other, past and present looking at each other, both intertwined with one another. All in all, I think Tatham said it best when he wrote, Homer, in his own profession, had been the true pathfinder, opening ways for others to follow. It was this artist, rather than any axeman who invented and innovated, who created rather than depleted, and who said new things in paint rather than repeating old tales. Thank you for taking time to listen to my art history project. This is Leonard Moore, signing off.